Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my simple drag and drop subgraph tutorial. <gasps> so, let me start out by showing you exactly how it works here. You take something and you can drag it and drop it somewhere. You can take it and move it around where it is. You can make it so that it can only go to certain areas. You don't have to have categorization, but you can. As you can see, I've got these set up so that they can only go into certain spots, but they can get put back wherever you want and everything like that. So let me show you how to actually use these. This offering is split into two different subgraphs. One is draggable and one is drop zone. The draggable goes on to the items that you'll be dragging in your game and the drop zone gets added to the actual places where the draggables can be dropped. I'm going to start by showing you how these drop zones are set up. So we're going to go to a drop zone and edit its graph. And you'll see all you have to do is just put the drop zone graph in here. It has three different flow outputs depending on what happens. The enabled, by default it is enabled, but you can turn it off if you want to. And you have to have a list of string category filled in here, otherwise it won't work. The list can be empty, but it has to exist. This is how, as you see here, this is how you tell it what category it is. And then if you look at the actual draggable objects, you see we have a categories list of string variable assigned to it. And then if we go in here to the graph, you can see how we are using an object variable to be able to turn the subgraph on and off. We have the option of setting which mouse button we want it to react to. And then we have the draggable able to fire an event if it's picked up or if it's dropped. I would like to stop for a moment and remind you that all of the subgraphs that I make, I offer to you via my itch.io page as seen here. While I've got your attention, I'd like to ask for your help. I'm trying to add more subgraphs to my offerings, so I need to know what you would find useful. Please drop a comment below this video with any suggestions you have. And of course, while you're down there leaving that comment, I'd really appreciate it if you would click that like button and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss out on anything. I am going to start by showing you around the drop zone subgraph. I do want to let you know that this subgraph is the version 1.5b version of this one and the draggable in case there are differences between the functionality of this and any future versions that I create. As you can see, we have trigger outputs for the enter event, the drop event, and the exit event. So when something valid enters, it can fire. and something valid is dropped, it'll fire. And when something valid exits, it should fire. For our data inputs, we've got the enabled data input, which is by default turned on. And then we have categories, list of string, which is required even if all you're feeding is an empty list of string. Let's go down here and zoom in and take a look at on pointer enter. So here is where the event itself starts. When the pointer is in, the first thing we do is check to see if it is set to be enabled. If it is not, it does absolutely nothing. If it's enabled, then it checks to make sure that you're actually dragging something. If you are dragging an object, then it checks to make sure that you've actually got something in your categories list. If you don't have any categories defined, then it automatically and sets the placeholder parent there. If you do have at least one category defined, it will loop through all of the categories and make sure at least one of them matches. And then if it does, it sets the placeholder parent. And then once that placeholder parent sets, it fires the enter flow. The on drop event is almost exactly the same as the on pointer enter event. The only difference here is that it sets a different variable on the object. As opposed to setting the placeholder parent, it sets the actual parent to return to there when you drop it. When the pointer exits, it goes through the same functionality. It checks to see if it's enabled. Categories don't matter on exiting. So it just completely ignores that. Make sure that you're dragging an object here. 
checks to see if the placeholder parent is currently set as this, and if so, then it sets the placeholder parent to the parent to return to. And then once the variable is set, we fire the exit flow. Finally, we have the draggable subgraph. As you can see, there is a graph variable we have set here, new sibling index, which we default to zero. Not hugely important there as we set it as we need to. Uh, for this flow, we have a pickup and a drop trigger output. We have the enabled data input, and we have the mouse button data input. I would also like to remind you that the draggable object will need to have a list of string variable called categories if you're using that functionality, but it is not required. Now let's take a look at the graph itself. As before, the first thing we do is check to even see if this is enabled. If it isn't enabled, the first thing we do is we destroy the pointer drag, setting it to null, so it doesn't cause problems. If it is enabled, then we go through and we check to make sure that we're using the right button. And then if that is wrong, then we also reset the pointer drag to null. If we're using the right button, we go through a sequence. First, we set our placeholder. And at the moment, we take a copy of the original thing that we're dragging. We change the alpha on it. And then we change the alpha on the object we're dragging itself. And then once we've done that, we set up the object we're using by setting the parent, the canvas group for dragging, and then we set the placeholder parent, and then we sit, trigger the output that we've picked up the card. When we are dragging, this gets extremely complicated here. First thing we do, of course, is we check to see if it's enabled. We check to see if we're using the right mouse button, and then if both of those are OK, we stick the object to the cursor. Once the thing is stuck to the cursor, we split off and first we check the placeholder parent and see if the parent of the placeholder is the same as the placeholder parent or not. And we set according to what we get from there. Then, after we've done that, we have to set the default location, which is where it shows up on the board between others. And to do that, we have to actually loop through every one of the children objects. So we go through and we loop and we check the position and we compare it to the position of where our cursor is. And then we set it accordingly once we've looped through, uh, gone through. If, it's, if it should move, we move it. And then we check the location again here after we set that variable and we lower the new sibling index in case it is too far to the side and then we break the loop when this happens there and then once the loop happens we actually set the sibling index according to what we found during the loop finally we have the on drag end event once again we check to see if it's enabled then we check the mouse button used if it's supposed to fire we destroy our placeholder and we put the object we're dragging in place of where that placeholder was and then we fire the drop event. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching this video. Uh, please, again, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything from it, please click that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below the video. So if there is something that you want to know now, let me know and I will see what I can do about teaching that to you right away. See you guys again next time. Have a great day.